with holding forth the word of life glad you joined us today very thankful that you would give up your time to hear the word of god and i believe the lord's going to bless you we declare there's going to be a penetration of the word of the lord there's going to be the sword of the spirit that's going to pierce your heart and the message today is going to find a good place, a very good place in your heart. I declare that your heart is good soil for the word of God to be implanted so that you are going to receive a great harvest as you align yourself with the good word of the Lord. Now, this is a new month. I move, our ministry moves, Holding Forth the Word of Life is an apostolic ministry. We move according to the Hebraic calendar. Now, a lot of people that may be watching, you may not even really understand what I'm talking about. That's okay, because I haven't always understood it either. But the Lord in His grace gave me revelation of the deep meaning of the Hebraic calendar. How the Lord said in Ecclesiastes 3 that there's a time and there is a season for everything under the sun. And so in our earth wall, timing is extremely important. The seasons that we in are extremely important. And as you look at the Hebraic calendar, you have to understand this is God's calendar. God chose the Hebrews. He chose the Hebraic people. They were the pioneers. They were God's chosen people. And they have a calendar of which God gave them. And so we are now all God's people. And that middle wall between the Jew and the Gentile has been taken down through the Messiah Jesus the Christ. And so we begin to see with new eyes uh, how important each month is. When you begin to study each month, you're going to be so amazed at how everything just falls and aligns and how there's a perfect message in each month. And the Lord did it this way as a sign for you to see that he is real, that you can't make this stuff up, and that he brings this to bear so we can have a closer look at what God is desiring for us to see each month. We are, as I said, in the month of Av. Av is powerful in that it means father. So all this month, I want you to begin to look at God, not just as God, but look at God as your father. And he is the father of lights. That makes you a light. He is also the father of all comfort. And that makes you a comforter. Amen. He is the father of Jesus Christ. And the father of Jesus Christ is also your father, beloved. So we have such a family in the Lord. And God is love. And God loves you. You have a heavenly father who is for you, not against you. And it's within him that there is absolute purity and goodness. The Hebrew letter that is aligned with the month of Av is Tate. And Tate uh, is found, the first time you see this letter found in Scripture is in Genesis 1-4. And it is the letter that begins the word Tov. And Tov, what do you think Tov means? It means good or goodness. Uh, the Lord said, let there be light, and he saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness, and it was good. It was tough. It was good. So everything that God is doing, 
your father God is doing in your life, though you may not see it as good at the time, it is good because God is good. And so we have to align ourselves with that truth because the enemy of our souls, he, the devil, is always at work to suddenly, very subtly, um, craftily get you to believe that God is not for you, that God is not absolutely good. He, he wants you to move astray of the Father's goodness. Uh, David said, surely what goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that should be a promise that we should cling to and that we should claim and that we should declare out of our mouth. We need to speak it out so that our ears can hear it. Because the enemy of our soul will whisper into our ears just the opposite. And so this is a powerful month of learning how to hear properly, learning how to discern the truth. The, the tribe that represents this month is uh, Simeon, and Simeon means to hear. We need to have circumcised ears. So the voices that we hear, we can separate them out from darkness. Remember, the light was separated out of the darkness. The enemy will also often speak to you a dark thing. And as I said, he's very subtle. So you have to get that it's not you that is thinking that or or perpetuating that voice and it's not God that is doing it it is the devil because it is not pure it is not good so you have to separate yourself out from anything the enemy might be telling you and that takes discernment beloved that takes your hearing in the spirit to be sharpened so this is a month for you to truly discern what you're hearing and to always separate yourself out of any darkness. You don't put up with it. You get out of the darkness. You come into the light where the Lord is. Another very powerful thing about the letter Tate. So when you look at it, it's a picture language. You know, the Hebrew language is a picture language. It's symbolic of so many things. It's just so great to study it. It looks like a womb. It's... Um, it's a full womb if you look at it. And what does a womb represent? Well, we know that a womb is hiding something very good. We know that a womb is a, is a uh, chamber of gestation where a seed is planted. And in time, that seed grows. And when the fullness of time comes, it is manifested. So... As we look at the womb, as we look at this little letter tape, we see it representing the promise. And we know that our Father God is the Father of promise. Jesus said that it was expedient that he would go away so that he could send to us the promise of the Father. And who is the promise of the Father but the Holy Spirit? Now the Holy Spirit lives within us. And it is through the Holy Spirit that every seed, every word of God that is planted within our spiritual womb will be able to grow and will be able to manifest. And when we get to the time of birthing, it will be the Holy Spirit in you that will bring forth that birth, to bring you into a newness of life, to bring that promise that you've been holding on to, to come about. You will have a breakthrough, a breaking of the waters, and the Spirit of the Lord will be that midwife to bring that seed that is grown now, that you've nurtured within your spiritual body, when it's ready to come forth, it is going to come forth and it is going to give you great, great joy. So do you have a seed? 
And what is a seed? Well, I'll tell you, Jesus said that the word of God is the seed. Every time you read the word, you need to read it with that thought in mind that it is a seed. Now, it's up to you to plant that seed within you. To take that seed, appropriate that word, and put it within you. Put it within your spirit, man. And remind your soul of it and your body of it always. And you plant it within the heart. You plant it within your, 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 even your soul. That is how our soul is saved, beloved. is through the engrafted word of God. There are a lot of issues in our soul, in our heart, that need to be cleansed and need to be corrected because our soul many times has been bent to sin because of the lies that we believe. But when we receive Christ, we receive the word, the seed of the word, and it begins to grow. Christ begins to grow in us. His fullness begins to grow, and he will push out the bad, amen? And our soul, he's the lover of our soul, and he will heal our soul, convert our soul, and our soul will become like his soul, and that is such a beautiful thing. Think of a woman that is pregnant. She's pregnant with a promise, and she's pregnant with the seed of the man. And we need the corporate body of Christ. The bride of Christ needs to be pregnant with the seed of the man of God, with our Jesus. All that the Lord wants for you, he implants within you as a seed. And in this life, you can become very fruitful in this life and bear fruit that's going to give you great joy, fruit that will remain. And why? Because you're abiding in the Lord. You're abiding with him and you know you can do nothing apart from him. And because of that wonderful relation, intimate alliance you have with Christ, your life becomes such a fruitful, righteous branch. And that's where your joy is going to be. Your joy will remain in being a fruitful carrier of the word of God. This is the life that the Lord created you to live. So do you have a promise? Has the Lord shown you what he has for your life? Now, some of you might say, I I don't even have a promise. What are you talking about? You know, the word is full of precious promises. It's full of precious seed, but we have to see that seed uh, for ourselves and take it within ourselves and understand that those promises are for us if we appropriate them. And as we appropriate them, we have to mix that promise with our faith to see that come to pass in our life. And there will be many adversaries. There will be a lot of resistance to see that seed come forth. This is how we grow in the grace of the Lord. When we become close to the Lord, when we grab a hold of his promises, keep them very close to us, and believe and have no doubt that these things are going to come to pass in our life. And once they come, once the desire cometh, it is truly a tree of life. Amen, beloved? So what has the Lord promised you? What have you claimed in the scripture that the devil is always trying to come to you to get you to release that promise, to quit that promise, amen? That wants you to just give up. That is where your destiny lies. That's a very, very big part of your purpose on earth. So I I bless you, and I declare that you're going to not be a quitter, but you're going to take that word, just like a woman that has a seed, and you're going to take care of that seed, and you're going to grow, your potential is going to grow, your womb is going to grow, your spiritual capacity is going to grow. And when the day, when the season comes, that promise that you've been holding on to is going to manifest. You've got to believe that, and you've got to see that as the goodness of God. So are you pregnant with a promise today? 2 Corinthians 1, 18. But as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. And this is where we have to get. You can't 
say one day, well, I believe the promise for me is yes. And then the next day you change and say, no, well, I believe that the promise for me is no. God is not a yes and no God. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. In the sense of making a commitment in our our natural life. But when the Lord gives you a promise, it is yes and amen. He's not going to change his mind. But the enemy of your soul is going to create circumstances and attack you to get you to waver, to get you to be double-minded. One day you think it's yes, the next day you think it's no. You have a double mind, beloved. And let not the man that has a double mind think that he'll be able to receive anything from the Lord. It's not the Lord doesn't want to give it to you. He's unable to give it to you because you're not able, you're not stable to handle what you're asking for. So it says, but as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the one who was proclaimed among you by me and Sylvanus and Timothy was not yes and no, but has always been yes in him. For every one of God's promises are yes in him and therefore also through him the amen is spoken why to the glory of god every promise that you receive you receive it knowing that is a yes promise and when it when it comes to fruition you're going to see that it was a full yes from the very get-go but as time has a way of delaying things and just think about a woman pregnant you don't you don't receive the seed and immediately have the baby there's a gestation period the child can't come until the child's ready to come and you're ready for the child to come it's it's a symbiotic relationship so you have to Know that the Lord is growing your potential for what you're seeded for and what you're believing for when the time is right, it's going to come. So you, during this time period where you're waiting, hope deferred make the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. So the Lord is saying, just remember that my promises are always yes in the Lord. And therefore, through the Lord, they're always amen. In other words, so be it. You begin to receive the promise of the word of God, whatever that is, whatever you're believing for. In the Lord, it can't be apart from the Lord. He's not going to give you anything that's not in him to give. If if you want bread, he's not going to give you a stone. Amen. Uh, If you want fish, he's not going to give you a snake. You know, he's unable because that's not the nature of God. So you, you just have to understand Sometimes you might receive a promise of the world or the, or the promise of something that's perverted. And you, may, you won't ever receive that from God, never, ever. But every promise in Jesus, every promise in the word of God is a good promise. And it's always yes and amen. So no matter what you're going through, the time period you're going through, Uh, He's taking you through something to get you to something. Amen. So you stand strong knowing that these promises are yes. And they're not going to change to a no. Even though the enemy may accuse you and cause you to believe it will become a no. Joshua 21, 43. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had solemnly promised to their ancestors and they conquered they conquered it and they lived in it now that's very powerful so you see they had to conquer and you're going to have to get that to see the fruition of your promise of the lord your destiny to be fulfilled you're going to have to be able to resist the enemy to conquer it so the lord you see that they had to conquer but they also lived in it so you you have to be strong you're strong in the lord The promise is yes, but you can play a part in that to receive the fullness of that promise because there you do have adversaries. You do have enemies and devil never wants you to live the promise. He wants you to miscarry the promise. But beloved, you are not going to miscarry the promise. You're going to stand 
having done all to stand. You're going to mix that promise with the faith of God. And you, like the Israelites, through the leadership of Joshua and Caleb, they, they were the ones that did not listen to the bad report of the ten spies. Remember that? Actually, on the ninth of Av, uh, the, the spies, the twelve spies came back to the Israelis. Ten of the spies said, we're not able to conquer the land. It's a beautiful land. It's flowing with milk and honey, and it's just wonderful. In other words, they went in and they explored it. They even got to see it, experience temporarily, even taste it. But when they went back to tell the people about it, they gave a bad report in the sense, oh, it's wonderful, but we're not going to be able to conquer it. Because there's giants in the land. And the unfortunate thing is the people listen not to the good report of Caleb and Joshua, which said we are well able to conquer this land. Because, see, the Lord had promised it to them. See, they had the right attitude. They had um, a different kind of a spirit than the other ten spies because their ears were circumcised to hear the voice of the Lord. So during the time period by which you're moving into the promises of God, make sure you listen to the right voice and stand strong so you can conquer, you can overcome the devil who's going to resist you from receiving the fullness of your promise. The Lord made them secure in fulfillment of all he had solemnly promised their ancestors. Now, their ancestors didn't get to live it, but they got to live it because of of how they positioned themselves. They mixed faith with the word of God. They heard the word, they heard the promise, and they mixed it with their faith, and that's why they were able to enter their rest. None of their enemies could resist them. Now, they wanted to resist them. They moved to resist them, but they weren't able to overcome them. None of their enemies could resist them. Not one, powerful listen, not one of the Lord's faithful promises to the family of Israel was left unfilled. Not even one. Everyone was realized. Now, that's the Father God we have. He is the, the, the Father of promise. And he is saying, not one of the things I've promised you will go unfulfilled. If you're able to align yourself with my promise and to believe and let not doubt hold you back. Don't allow doubt to rob the promise that God has for you. Going on to Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a human being that he should change his mind. So we, we acclimate ourselves many times to humanity. And somehow or another, we filter our image of God through man. And we should never, ever, ever do that. Uh, man should filter their image through God. There's a big difference in that. We are created in God's image, but we want to make God in our image sometimes. And that's where we get extremely twisted. And so... The Spirit of God is saying, I want you to remember this. God's not like a human being that changes his mind, that it's wishy-washy. God is not a man that he should lie. Has he said and will he not do it? So when he speaks, you, speaks to you the word of God you, and you align yourself with that, he will do what he says he'll do because he's not a liar. Now, the devil is a liar. That's why the devil always comes back and gets you to try to doubt what God has said to you you know, has not God said, you know, subtly trying to get you twisted. But beloved, you stand, you learn how to discern, and, and you learn how to quickly separate yourself out of darkness, pull yourself out of that dark lie, and cast that lie down. Or has he spoken, and will he not make it happen? Look at that. Or has he spoken and will he not make it happen? The Lord's going to make it happen. He spoke it. He'll make it happen. If you agree with that and align yourself with that, he will make it happen through you. And so I want to encourage you today. Know the Lord. Know his promises for you. 
This is a time for you to be pregnant with the promises of God. This is a time for you to bear fruit, to bring that fruit to what? Fruition, whatever the Lord has spoken to you, to have the seed of the word grow within you. That is going to be so powerful because you begin to grow. Your influence begins to grow. The anointing that is seeded within you, it begins to flow out of you now. Amen? Power, and because the Lord's given you authority, his power is going to move through you because you've positioned yourself to be able to receive that. You've expanded now. And you, you're going to move so powerfully in the things of the Lord. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. Dear friends, do not let this one thing escape your notice, that a single day is like a thousand years with the Lord, and a thousand years are like a single day. The Lord is not slow concerning his promise, as some regard slowness, but is being patient toward you, because he does not wish for any to perish, but all to come to repentance. When you read this verse in context in 2 Peter, you know, he's talking about the second coming of the Lord, but we do understand through this passage by the Spirit of God, the nature of the Lord. The Lord is not slow in bringing the promise that he gave to you to pass either, beloved. He's not in time like we get in time. But I can tell you one thing. The seed that he puts in you, it has to find good ground. And sometimes things cannot come to pass in our life because we haven't come to full repentance. And the Lord is being slow to bring forth the fulfillment of promises in our life because he wants to begin to show us the things in our heart that need to change before the promise materializes. Because he doesn't want to bring something to pass before you're able to maintain it. Because that would be a dangerous thing. And that would be a destructive thing. So what are the things the Holy Spirit is bringing to mind right now in your life that you need to have a mind shift with in order for the promise to come through? As you ask the Lord for that this month, as you humble yourself in this month of Av, He'll show it to you. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And give you peace. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.